At the same time, as it persists with its aggressive territorial claims over Taiwan, China even more aggressively claims the South China Sea. It's a crucial international shipping route, abundant with natural resources, and China has illegitimately taken control. Station calling U.S. military aircraft. Please identify yourself. Uh, this is Chinese level. Uh, please go away quickly in order to avoid the long judgment. They've gone too far now, haven't they, in the South China Sea? There's not a great deal more we and other nations can do. I mean, that, they're not going to pack things up and, and move away. Well, I think there are important things that we can do, uh, particularly in conjunction with our allies. When you have a British carrier group coming through the South China Sea, uh, Australia, will, uh, has been publicly announced, will, will join in that. We'll send a frigate uh, to accompany that. That's exactly what we should do, because that demonstrates that these are international waters, that they are subject to freedom of navigation, uh, and we should do that when it's appropriate in our national interest and consistent with our capability. A uh, foreign military airplane, you are approaching my military security ear. Please go away quickly in order to run transmit. I am a United States military aircraft conducting lawful military activities outside national airspace. I am operating with due regard as required under international law. The illegal militarization extends throughout the South China Sea. There are more than 25 Chinese outposts all through here but there are three that are most significant. The first, Woody Island. Once a patch of sand, it's now a fortified base that involves thousands of Chinese personnel. There are also missile silos, radar, and an extended runway that's long enough for heavy bomber aircraft. It's all about trying to get the region used to the idea of a large-scale military presence of assertive Chinese aircraft and ships and really saying to everyone now you, you just live with that because this is how we're now running the region. There's also Mischief Reef. In 2016 it was deemed part of the Philippines economic zone. China has reclaimed over 1400 acres of land and built a military base and deep water harbour for Navy ships. This is highly dangerous territory. And it's a game of chicken, which the, uh, I, I believe the Chinese have been copying the Russians on and learning that the more aggressive and audacious your behaviour, the more you can get away with. But China's most advanced, most powerful base sits more than a thousand kilometres from mainland China, Fiery Cross Reef. From little more than a rocky outcrop, in under a year, it was transformed into an island fortress. It's now home to missile launches, hardened shelters, and hangars for dozens of warplanes. So I think that both the United States and Australia underestimated how important the South China Sea was. And, and when Xi Jinping was going through his island building, the uh, Obama administration of the day took the view that this was not worth a fight uh, with Beijing over some rocks and shoals, as, as they were described. In fact, what happened was that China built military bases to give it the capacity to actually control the air and sea space around the South China Sea. And it's not a small piece of geography. It's about 80% the size of the Mediterranean. And it just so happens that it's an area of geography through which a vast quantity of Australian trade flows and all Japanese um, oil and petrol flows. And, and so therefore, this is a critical bit of strategic geography, which we rather dumbly allowed China to establish control over and is now, frankly, China's to control. U.S. military aircraft, please stay away from this area and leave immediately. Your action is un unfriendly and dangerous. Your, your actions are dangerous. China's illegitimate occupation of the South China Sea has caused tremendous geopolitical tension countries around the world are forming new relations and deepening existing ones. How to curb China is now a priority. 
Since you left office, China's really expanded, shall we say, its militarization of the South China Sea. Have you been surprised by that pace oh, yes. of aggression? I, I, that is very disturbing, and it's all the more reason why we should uh, reinforce uh, our security alliance with the United States. It's why we should uh, talk collaboratively with our democratic allies in the region, such as Japan and the United States and India. There's the Quad. Australia, the US, Japan and India. All wanting to push back against China and all intent on maritime order and a free and open Indo-Pacific region. Each year, the Quad's separate forces come together to sharpen joint force operations. Can we allow China's aggression and its expansion in the South China Sea to continue? Well, what are you suggesting Australia does about China saying we're going to do what we've been doing, that is build artificial structures? Australia rejects the notion of the nine dashed lines representing a border. I mean, if, it, if I were, had been asked about it as foreign minister, I would have said Australia doesn't remotely recognise that. No country does. Australia rejects the notion of militarisation of these artificial structures, and we certainly don't accept that there's a, a zone around an artificial structure that China builds. China now has plenty of firepower to throw around. Their navy is the world's biggest, with over 350 battleships, and many more are on the way. While the US has 290. China now has the most missiles, and the strike range is a huge international concern. Not to mention the most combat aircraft and more tanks than any other nation. But it's the boots on the ground where there's the biggest difference. China has well over two million active military personnel. The US, 1.3 million. And Australia, we have around 60,000 in our defence forces. The race to counter China's military might is now on. Quantity does have a quality all of its own. And the Chinese have considerably more offensive missiles than we have in the region. They have considerably more air power in the region. And they can have considerably more maritime uh, ships uh, in the region and they have deployed hypersonic missiles and we're still developing and testing our hypersonic missiles so we are for the first time uh, in a long time we have a, an overmatch problem that we're dealing with with Chinese China's looming threat has led to the United States realigning and increasing its forces on the Indo-Pacific nowhere in the world right now has a greater military build-up. So are you expecting war in our region? If you listen to the rhetoric of uh, the president or uh, to other officials from China, uh, they seem to be on a path of inevitability to uh, take back Taiwan in their own words. Uh, if that was the case, then it would be a question as to what the Americans did, uh, whether they entered into a conflict with the Chinese, and then we would have to make a decision off the back of that. But are we... Uh, seeking anything but peace in our region? Of course not. Uh, in fact, every effort, every decision that we're making at the moment is toward maintaining that peace and making sure that we have uh, whatever support we can for our neighbours in the region uh, to keep that stability and peace going. 